Hello, my fellow freedom builders, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to make a quick video in a series of uh, one stock videos I'm going to make here in the upcoming future, where I spend one video about five to 10 minutes explaining one stock uh, and what I think about it. Today's stock is applied material, and it is one of the stocks that I'm planning to put into my US portfolio. Today, we're going to have a look at their overall presentation. We're going to have a look at the different platforms that I normally look at. That could be um, Seeking Alpha, it could be Guru Focus, and then a new one that I have stumbled upon here called My Stock Scanner that is uh, putting on a lot of new features, and I'm going to show you some of them. We are, of course, also going to have a look at the overall stock charts where I'll talk to you a, a bit about the overall investor psychology that is going on in the stock market and in this stock right now. So let's have a quick look at the overall broad stock picture here. Now, Applied Material is a semiconductor company. You might know that already. They were founded in 1967. They went public in 72. And they have, um, and they have a grown into an, a national, multinational corporation, actually, with headquarters in California, United States. They have a long history of innovation, having introduced several groundbreaking technologies in the semiconductor manufacturing industry. And in the recent years, Applied Material has expanded its product portfolio to include solutions for, for instance, the production of solar panels and displays. Looking forward, uh, Applied Material is expected to continue this growth. There are some uh, some cons here, though. There are there are a bit of a something that is dragging it down. I'll I'll get into that in a second. Um, but uh, this entire uh, growth is driven by increasing demand for technology products and the company's strong position in the semiconductor manufacturing industry. As the world continues to shift towards uh, sustainability and sustainable practices, applied materials focus on sustainability is also a good thing, and it will likely also drive growth opportunities, in my opinion. If we take a look at it, uh, we can see they are in the semiconductor space. Uh, that is a very competitive space. We can see that they have uh, 7,300 active uh, patents. And uh, when we're looking at the pattern part, one thing I like to invest in when I'm looking at my longer term investments uh, is a company with what is called a wide moat. Um, a wide moat means that it is hard for newcomers to get directly into this industry and compete directly with a company. And with 7,000 active patterns, I think we can easily say that the moat is, is fairly wide here. One thing I also like when I'm looking at tech companies is if we're looking just at the overall here, uh, they have a revenue of around uh, $26.3 billion, which of course is huge. But what I do like to see is that they are spending more than 10% of the entire revenue just on research and development. That is nice to see because in this business, you cannot just lay back and say, well, we are a market leader, we have a wide mode, so we don't want to do anything about it. No, you have to put an insane amount of money and time and effort into research and uh, development, and they are definitely doing that. <clears throat> if we're looking quickly uh, here at the summary for applied material and my stock scanner, we can see that they are, and these are the 12 month forecast, we, we can see a PE ratio at 16 and a half. Uh, we can see some, and that is one of these, the smaller concerns here, we can see they have a, an earnings per share growth of minus 5%. There are some, you could say problems, at least something they are struggling a bit with. And uh, that is, for instance, that there are some uh, geopolitical risks. I will get to that in a second when I'm looking at the pros and cons for the stock. But there are something with some trade tensions between United States and China, for instance. And uh, they have, I think, about a third of their revenue coming from China. So that is a bit of a problem if that, uh, if, if, if that is getting harder and harder, that, uh, the, the, these trade difficulties between the two large countries. Um, however, uh, th there is a lot of focus from the Biden administration right now 
on getting a lot of chip and semiconductor production uh, developed in the United States. So that might over some years uh, be developed and, and be a benefit for applied materials. Now looking at the uh, different, we have the return on capital over 40%, return on equity 53 and a half, and the operating margins on 30%, that is insane. Um, Altman C score sh shows that this is a completely safe uh, company. And we can see that the analyst estimates are up in the buy and strong buy area up here. And that is not normally something I am particularly concerned with, but it is uh, it is nice to see that the big analysts are, are looking at this uh, as well. If we are looking uh, in Guru Focus here, we can see that um, they have the profitability rank. That's one of the things I'm looking at a lot. It is 10 out of 10. And here it is compared uh, versus the industry and versus its own history. And we can see that it's almost pure green uh, here. We can see the growth ranks are a bit more uh, mixed here. And uh, we'll have a look at the numbers just in, in a second. Um, and we can see that the overall value is uh, almost no matter what of the larger value methods you're looking at, we can see that they are in a reasonable area here. All right, having a, having a look at uh, the Seeking Alpha platform, uh, we can see that the valuation and the growth is getting a red F and um, I'll get into these Fs in a second. You can see the profitability, momentum and revisions are nice and green. One thing you can look at when you're buying a large company like this, of course, are the dividends. And they are not paying much out in dividends. It's something like 0.9% or something like that. Um, however, it's very safe. It is growing. It is consistent. And uh, they have a, uh, um, a uh, an interest coverage, uh, sorry, a dividend coverage that is very large. So they're not paying out much uh, in dividends. And in a company like that, this, I actually like that quite a lot because I do want their money, their free cash flow to be spent on research and development and not to pay out uh, to me uh, because then I'm getting taxed and I will have to find another place to invest uh, the same money. If we're looking at the My Stock Scanner here, <clears throat> it is a new product uh, and, and um, there will be links to it uh, in, in a short while. They're just putting in new features here. But we can see in the financial summary that the total revenue has been growing very nicely. Uh, over the last years here, it has had a, a, a average CAGR of almost 9% per year. However, we, we can see in the estimates here that it is declining. Uh, the revenue, also the earnings per share is declining a bit here. That is, of course, a little bit concerning, but I'll show you a chart in a second showing that I'm not too concerned about it. And I think this will be fairly um, short lived, this, uh, this decline. Uh, I think this will start uh, growing again. And then this might be the time to buy the stock. We don't have the, uh, the estimates in here yet about on the profitability and cash flow and so on, but they will come shortly. Now, looking at a very interesting chart here, <clears throat> we can see that we have the uh, black price line here. Then we have, uh, I do like to, to look at a 10 year uh, duration here, but of course we have uh, all the, the data in the system here. Uh, but on a, a 10 year time scale, we can see that their um, average price, er price earning on, on basic earnings are 33. So what this system does is that it is looking at, at an average of uh, 33 in PE, uh, where, would the, where should the price have been uh, every single year if uh, if it were compared to a price earning on 33 and then it it is saying well if the investors are willing to pay a price earning of 33 and if the estimates in the future are correct then where should the price theoretically move towards now we can see that applied material has been in what is called a value area for a very long time. It has from the bottom down here at 14, it went up to, well, it was more than a 10X, 12X, something like that. And then it, it went uh, down again, as you might know if you have followed them here in 21 and, and 22. A lot of tech had a problem here. Um, but they have started to increase and we'll have a look at the charts just in a second. But that means that if in the future the investment
investors are willing to pay a price earning on 33 and the estimates hold through, then there could be some very good growth potential here. We can look at some shorter time frame and we can see that on a shorter time frame, the, um, the investors have only been interested in, in paying what is a price earning of, of around 16. And even there, we are at a fairly uh, neutral level here. So you could say that if we are looking at seven years, maybe even five years, we are looking uh, a bit more uh, to go sideways here. We can see that the stock have a tendency from these value areas to move sharply upwards here. So uh, that is again, um, speak into the case of, of some good growth here. We can also look at some other metrics here. I do like to look at the free cash flow, for instance, where uh, we can see that applied material has been very good at following uh, the free cash flow line here. It has had over the last 10 years an average price to free cash flow at 20, just around 20. I actually do like my stocks to stay around that uh, 20 number or below in the price to free cash flow. We can see right now they are at a 16.8. So uh, there should be some upwards uh, momentum or at least potential for it uh, right here. Now, if we just go to the charts very quickly, we can see that having a bit of a longer time span here, we can see that it has been a bit of a volatile stock and it is a higher beta stock. So you are getting more volatility than the overall market. There's no doubt about that. Um, but, but what we can see and what I do like to see is that it is moving in some nice patterns and I'm looking for weekly tops and bottoms on uh, the chart here. I do have a model that I have developed. It's a statistical model um, that tries to predict when investors are starting to look looking for excuses to buy and sell a stock or an index or something like that. And these arrows here are put on before. Uh, it's not something I have done uh, in hindsight. These were put on. You can see uh, it, this week here, the model predicted that a downturn should be starting or could be starting. It took a couple of weeks, so it's not like it's a 100% precise model. Uh, here, it predicted that by the start of this week, we could see some beginning interest in the uh, from from the buy side of the of the um, of the market, and we did indeed get that as well. Here, we got the uh, the top pretty much uh, spot on, and right now it is saying that within a week or two, we might start to see some. Uh, buying interest. So what I'm looking at here is not to find the exact top or bottom, not at all. But what I'm looking at is that uh, we have a, a, a top here that was level with this top. Then we have a bottom and that was a lot higher than that this bottom. And we're seeing the next top is also higher than the, uh, than this top. So on these longer, uh, term uh, longer time frames here, uh, I am looking for some higher tops and higher bottoms. I don't need to time it uh, just exactly on, on the bottom, but I am looking to buy applied material right now. It has started to show some upwards uh, growth in the price here, and it seems like the larger investors are interested in getting into this stock. We can see that when they are, we can we can get some very, very nice growth rates here. So that is what I'm hoping for. And as you know, if you've followed me for a while, uh, I am looking to, to buy here, not necessarily time the market, but then I will be using these arrows to sell covered call on the stock so that I'm generating more income on them. All right, to a quick um, pros and cons list here, if you're interested in that. When I'm looking at applied material, I can see on the pro side that they are a market leader. Applied material is one of the largest and most established companies in the semiconductor manufacturing industry with a global presence and a reputation for quality and innovation. They're very diversified, that's another point. The company's product portfolio covers a broad range of equipment and services, making it less reliant on any one particular product or market. They have some very strong financials. Even though there are a bit of a decline over the next couple of years, Applied Materials has consistently delivered solid financial results with healthy margins and very strong cash flow. 
Um, as another uh, pr um, pro here, um, they have a lot of focus on sustainability. The company has a strong commitment to sustainability, which not only aligns with the increasing demand for sustainable products and practices, but also reduces cost in the long term. Uh, the future growth prospects, well, I see that the semiconductor industry is projected to grow significantly in the coming years, and applied material is well positioned to take advantage of this growth. There are some cons, however, uh, we should also consider them. Uh, there is a lot of competition. The semiconductor manufacturing industry is highly competitive, and applied materials faces some very stiff competition from other established players, uh, as well as new uh, entrance, but there are some like uh, ASML and LAM research that are competitors here. It is a cyclical market. Uh, the semiconductor industry is known for its cyclical nature and economic downturns can have a significant impact on demand for the company's product. And when we are looking at the financials or the economic in the world right now, we could look into some sort of recession. I have no idea how, how hot it will be, but there will be some downturn in the overall world economy that means that uh, that can affect the the um, the financials here on applied material of course um, well, uh, th there are some geopolitical risks if we're looking at the cons as well. That could be China, it could be uh, several other countries that United States are battling uh, a, a bit against. Uh, the company operates in various countries and geopolitical risk is uh, uh, such a, a trade tensions and, and regulatory changes can easily affect this business. Uh, then, of course, there is a techno uh, technology risk. Um, as a company operating in this tech industry, applied material faces risks associated with technological uh, obs uh, obsolescence and disruption from other uh, new technologies. We have seen that a ton of times where uh, well-established companies that could be Nokia on the, uh, on the mobile phone area, they all of a sudden got obsolete because they simply missed a new development, a new turn in the technology. Uh, technology. So of course that is a risk as well. So there are some pros and cons. I will be looking to adding applied material into my long-term US portfolio uh, within some weeks, I think. Uh, if the uh, if the charts are behaving and um, I will let you know how it goes with it and I'll put it in uh, an overall portfolio that we have here um, in, in my stock scanner that it's possible to build some very nice portfolios here and I will be putting all of the stocks that I'm making videos on in a collective portfolio so we can have a look at them once in a while. That's all for now. Uh, take care of yourself and your money uh, out there and I'll talk to you shortly. Bye for now.